So there was this lady named Dee Dee Blanchard, kind of chubby, sweet and cheerful. One night, some crazy stuff goes down and suddenly, the neighbors and cops are barging into Dee Dee's place. They find Dee Dee lying dead in a pool of blood in her kitchen, stabbed multiple times. The whole neighborhood is shocked, like, why would someone do this to such a nice lady? Everyone's affected, man. Oh, and Dee Dee had this daughter, Gypsy. The thing is, no matter how much the cops search the house, they can't find a trace of Gypsy. Gypsy is this skinny little girl, like 130 centimeters tall, always rocking those bottle boom glasses. Mostly chilling in her wheelchair, hooked up to an oxygen tank most of the time. Basically, Gypsy got a laundry list of physical illnesses, like someone hit her with every disease in the book. According to her room, Dee Dee, Gypsy's got muscular dystrophy, breathing problems, vision issues, migraines, asthma, cancer, and a bunch of other stuff. So, Gypsy being missing from the house raises a big old question mark for both the cops and the neighbors. Plus, seeing Gypsy's wheelchair abandoned in the middle of the house got everyone wondering what the heck happened to this innocent, defenseless kid. Why would someone like Dee Dee, a hard-working woman, end up getting murdered? This case is one of those that really mess you up. Gypsy had all these different medical conditions and Dee Dee always made sure everyone knew her daughter had a brain problem, like her brains stuck in seven-year-old mode, and she never went to school. Dee Dee always dressed Gypsy up like a little kid, took super good care of her. She did whatever she could to give her daughter a normal, happy life. But she never denied that her daughter had issues. She totally owned up it and deal with it. Most of the time, their photos were of the two of them together, Gypsy and her mom. They really loved each other, man. They had a good life in their house, which was given to them by a charity in a community where most of the houses were also provided by charities. They lived there, but their house was very fancier than the others, with special stuff for Gypsy, like a jacuzzi for her muscles. Dee Dee didn't have a regular job, because she had to take care of her daughter all the time with all those illnesses. But their finances weren't too bad, different charities helped them out. Dee Dee would set up a sheet in her backyard, bring out a widow projector so Gypsy and other kids who were struggling financially could come and watch movies like they were at a cinema. She had also put out a donation bowl, saying anyone who wanted to chip in for Gypsy's medical expenses could drop some cash. She talked about how before they moved to that area she used to live with her own family. But they treated Gypsy so badly that she had to run away from them. She said Gypsy's grandma used to burn her with cigarettes, and Dee Dee's husband, Gypsy's dad, didn't have a good relationship with Dee Dee. He split, leaving them, and their relationship ended in a divorce. Gypsy's dad always made fun for her, never helped them out, never gave them any money or anything and they hadn't heard from him in ages. Gypsy and her mom were happy, because like this one time a charity took them to Disneyland or another time they got to hang with some famous celebs. Despite Gypsy's physical condition, they were living a good life. They were like a perfect story for the media, a two-person family struggling through tough times, and people admired them. Until one day, a statue pops up on Dee Dee's Blanchard's Facebook page that changes everything. It says 
she is dead now. The first comments were weird. Man, everyone was surprised, like maybe her Facebook got hacked. Someone else commented, go knock on the door and see what happened. But like, commenting, what's gonna solve anything? The another status comes up, saying, yeah, I slathered that filth pig and raped her dirty daughter. One of the neighbors couldn't take it and went to Didi's house to see what was up. When she got there, she saw that some other neighbors had already gathered there. No matter what did, nobody answered the door. The suspicious part was that D.D. had recently bought a van to take Gypsy around. The van was still parked, which means actually the mom and the daughter hadn't gone anywhere. So the neighbors got worried and called the cops, saying we don't have permission to go in. One of the neighbors goes up to wall, takes a peek inside the house, sees everything neat and tidy, no sign of a struggle. The house is empty, nobody's there, just a wheelchair in the middle of the room without anyone on it. Imagining that this kid is suffering without the wheelchair was appnizing for them. An hour later, the police get a warrant, break in, and find a chubby lady with a kind face lying sprawled in the kitchen, murdered with a knife. And it's not like she just died. They realize she's been dead for a few days, but there is no trace of the wheelchair. One of the gypsy's friends, a teenage girl named Ellie, who was a neighbor, goes to the police station and says she has information about the gypsy that no one knows. The gypsy had an online boyfriend, and this girl was from their neighborhood, very close friends with the gypsy, almost like an older sister. But Ellie never liked it when the gypsy hang out with her. She says the gypsy was a bad influence and a corrupt girl. That's why their friendship faded over time, and they mostly communicated through Facebook chats. In the chats the gypsy had with Ellie, she mentioned finding a boyfriend on dating site and recently feeling sexual desires. But her mom wouldn't allow her to have a boyfriend. That's what the gypsy said. Her boyfriend's name is Nicholas. We've been talking for two years now. Nicholas doesn't care that I'm in a wheelchair. He's been supportive of my struggles. We've even talked about marriage and our future in our chats. I want to slowly tell my mom about this. Of course, it wasn't the first time the gypsy did something like this. Despite what you saw, she talked to boys online about major topics like poverty, sex, and relationships. Everything was going on in her head. Then, one day, you saw her talking to boys online and got very angry. After all, this simple vulnerable kid could get into trouble. Ellie told the police that she was afraid of the gypsy's mom. Dead. She complained a lot about me. She had read our Facebook chats and taken away all communication devices from the gypsy so she couldn't talk to her or anyone else. But end of 2004, the gypsy had told Ellie about Nicholas in the chat. But then she didn't mention him anymore. The police quickly find the identify of the gypsy's boyfriend, Nicholas. They send the police team to the boy's house. To their disbelief, he surrenders very easily. In other disbelief, they see the XGSP is also in that house, alive and well. Nothing has happened to her. Everything is fine with her. But the next morning, the chef of police of that city comes for an interview. He says, actually, that some things are not always as they seem. What did he discover not realize that the gypsy, the day after she left the house, didn't even use the wheelchair for a single day? She breathes easily. It's not connected to an oxygen machine. Her hair is short but thick. She doesn't have any belt patches. Her appearance is very good. There is no sign of disabled and sick child that everyone has been for years. After going to the police station, 
the confesses that all those stories of illness and sickness were fake. It was all a show, and she says my mom forced me to those things. The gypsy's story became media news. Everyone knew the gypsy unconsciously cried and thought to themselves, We've seen her suffer for so many years, and our hearts ache for her. We were all folded. And here the question is, what was the reason behind her actions? You see, in every city she lived in, she had a different name and her birth certificate name was a different scene. It was different. Daddy, Gypsy, you know, they saw each other in high school. They became acquainted. You see, she got pregnant at 17 by her boyfriend who was 24 years at the time. In these circumstances, she had no choice but to get married. The guy says, I woke up on my 18th birthday and saw you next to me in my bed. I told myself the path is wrong. I am not in love with my wife. It was just an accident. So, he leaves her just like that when is she pregnant. She lets go of him alone, and off he goes. Some time later, the gypsy is born perfectly healthy. You see, she wanted to always portray her as sick, so he forcibly took prescribed pills from other doctors, which had many side effects. She wanted to be seen in the media, get financial support from charities, and get money from government officials to provide a good home and excellent welfare. Well, the gypsy gets arrived, but she still thinks she's sick because she's been pretending like this for so long. It's not something she's used to. Gypsy bolted a couple of times and ran off to her boyfriend, but her mom pulled a stunt to bring her back home and cut off all her communication like the computer and her friends. Nicholas. Gypsy's boyfriend, who figured out Dee Dee was abusing their kid, cooked up a murder plan with Gypsy because he loved their child so much. Turns out Nicholas stabbed them and Gypsy got slammed with a 10-year prison sentence as an accomplice. When her lawyer visited her a while later, she was in high spirits. Her physique had improved. She was happy, but she regretted not taking action sooner. Case closed. If you are into crime stories and documentaries, subscribe to our channel because we'll be posting loads of videos every day.